Hey guys, welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial today, and this is going to be looking at the part 6 to the C Sharp Basics tutorial series, and we're going to be looking into activating and deactivating game objects or objects that you've got in your 3D world that you want to do something with. So in the um, earlier in the series, in part 2, we did something about um, trigger events. So when you expect to do something on a trigger event, you walk through a collider where we might walk through this little box we have here, and then we expect some to happen so we're going to look into um, turning game objects on and off because it's quite an important thing to learn and it's not a fundamental part of C sharp but it can be quite effective with you know any type of game that you're going to create to unhide hide depending if you complete an objective and you want to make something happen so let's get straight into it if we right click in the project uh, panel we'll go create and we'll go C sharp and then what we'll do from here is we'll call this trigger event and I'll call it trigger event game object just for the sake of this tutorial. Now we'll open up in whatever code editing software you've got and you'll see we'll start off with the public class that we've got for the script that we've just created. Now I just like to keep my uh, curly brackets below so I have everything together and I'll get rid of everything that's between these two curly brackets So we'll keep it nice and organized So first of all if you remember we want to create a trigger event So I will briefly go through this but you can look at part two if you feel that you want to go through trigger events more in depth So we're gonna say void on trigger enter then open brackets and in the two brackets we're gonna write Collider space other and then below there we're going to have two curly brackets and then in between the curly brackets we will say if other dot compare tag then in brackets and in two quotes we're going to write whatever tag that we're looking for so more often than not we're looking for the player tag so if the, t uh, if the player walks into the collision then we will do something then what we can do is we can have two curly brackets below here and then this is where we're going to write whatever we want to do to set the game object active for instance now if you want to do that there's you know a few ways that you could possibly go around doing this first way you could add a public variable to the top of here and reference it in the inspector or you could potentially um, have something which finds that object for you but this one is possibly the quickest way to do it. Not always the best, but if you've only got a few game objects and you need this to happen, it's a good way to just manage the things that are going on. So what we'll do is we'll write public. And then whatever game object, um, whatever variable type should I say. So we're going to have a public game object. And then we're going to look for our object that we want to activate. So we'll just call this cube object for instance and then I will put a semicolon on the end and then what we're looking for there is we're looking for a public game object cube object so we're going to reference that in the inspector and then in our um, if statement of our trigger enter we can say that cube object dot set active in brackets we can put false or true depending on which way we want to do it we can save that out go back into unity I've already got a cube here which will be my cube object. So this is the thing we expect to disappear. Now what I'll do is I'll duplicate this cube object, which is going to act as our collision. So I'll just make it bigger so we can walk through it. We'll make sure that it is trigger. We want to make sure on your first person controller, um, you are tagged player, if not already. I just imported the old Unity 4 character, but it doesn't matter for, the, for this. But I've just made sure that I am tagged player. Now what we expect is based on this, we will add our script to our, we'll just call this our trigger. And we will add the trigger event game object script to the object. And now it's going to ask for, it's not got on game object that we want, so we want to add a cube there. So we expect when we walk through this collision, the cube will just disappear. So we have our, um, trigger in front and there's a cube there 
if we walk ahead you'll notice that the cube just disappeared now you can see that um, if we left this available for the player to run in again, it would keep executing the code for as long as you walk through the collider. So then what you could do is you could say at the end of when you've activated the, can, the game object, that's going to just um, run that line once. Then we can say this dot game object dot set active is false just like we did above so all we're saying here is we're just saying that the game object that we're currently collided with we'll just set it to false so we can't do anything with it again so you'll notice that when I walk through it again you'll notice that both items will disappear so you'll see that both things disappeared and in the hierarchy you will notice that cube and trigger are both active and set to false now that's good in your game because you're not exactly destroying it they still almost exist in the game world but they're not taxing any renderer or any adding any tries or vertexes or um, shadow problems to your game you're just getting rid of them so they're not rendered anymore so it's good if you want to bring them back or bring game objects back if they're already living in the scene so it's a good way to manage things now that's just the simple way to actually um, go about doing it. You could do this in a slightly different way. We could um, actually do a void start. Have two curly brackets below. So then what we could do is we could essentially um, make a private variable. So we could make private game object and we could call this cube object two, for instance. This is just for the sake of this. I could essentially say that cube object two um, equals game object with two capitals dot find object with tag. We could just use dot find and then specify the name of the item that we want. But say you've got thousands of objects in your game, it's going to be extremely slow to search it. So it's probably more beneficial to say that, okay, so cube object two equals game object dot find, and then we'll find the object with the specific tag that we're going to give. So we'll give the object a tag of cube, for instance, and then we will add a semicolon there so what this will do as soon as this code is actually um, run or your game is actually executed it will say well we need to find the game object with the tag cube and we'll automatically add it to the script for you without you having to specify in the inspector so what we could do here is in our script as another example is you could do cube object 2 dot set active and then in brackets false with a semicolon now if you didn't do this right it would throw up an error saying it can't find the actual object but say we've got cube here and what I'll do is I've duplicated the cube and what I'll do is I'll call this cube 2 there you go now when I'm on this trigger you'll notice that there's no public variable for us to specify but with cube 2 we need to give it a new tag so we could essentially give it a, um, an actual tag called we'll add a new tag and we'll call this cube once we have that we'll go back on cube 2 go to tags go to cube and now it's got the tag of cube now when we expect to play the game the game will have already found that cube 2 that we're actually looking for and we expect that when we run through this collision both cube 1 because we already um, give, um, gave it in the inspector for the public variable and we expect the script to have already found cube 2 because it based on that tag that we had given so if we walk through you'll notice that everything disappeared so based on everything we have we're just telling the script to say right this is the object that we have we've set up here we've set we're looking for a game object and then we're saying find it with a tag of cube then when we go through the collision we're saying that if the collision um, that was detected we've seen the players collided with our object we'll set cube object to false which is there and then cube object 2 is also false and then we're just setting the all col the whole col collider itself or the object that the script sits on we're just setting that to false as well so really 
they're two simple ways to either find an object to specify itself in the inspector, turn it off or on, and similarly, if you had a game object which was false and you walked across the collider, you could set it to true. So I'll give you a quick example. I've just turned um, cube object to true. So we expect that if I turn the cube off with this tick box at the top, I press play, You'll notice that there's no cube there anymore, it's still cube 2 is alive, we expect this to turn off, cube 2 to turn off, but cube 1 to come alive again. So what we'll do is that's what exactly what's happened, and we can run back through the collider, and it doesn't exist because you can see down in the hierarchy what's happened. So those are simple basic ways where you can tr control logic in your game without really doing that much groundwork to do it. But it's important to understand this basic of just being able to s pretty much just set active true or false to do certain things. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.